Welcome to LOA Today. Walt Thiessen, Alex King, and Carlos Balasquita here on this Tuesday, November the 6th, 2018. It's Election Day here in the United States, 4 p.m. New York time, 1 p.m. Los Angeles time, and 9 p.m. London time to cover the main time zones. And we hope you're having a good Election Day in the U.S. or a non-Election Day in other countries and and having a, 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 a good positive attitude with all that you're doing, because that's really the most important thing, no matter what you're doing every single day. You want to be in that good feeling place, because that's where all the good things happen. So, Alex, Carlos, hey guys, how you doing? What's happening, Alex? You had a good weekend? I did have a good weekend. I went to my brother from another mother's uh, baby shower. Very nice. Gave out some good gifts, so I enjoyed myself. I remember you were talking about how it was good for you to get out. Did you feel like it was good to get out after you got out? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I had my service dog, but I was still really anxious while oh, I was there. Yeah. Well, you got out. Congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back for that one because that's a good one. Thanks. Yeah, you deserve <laughs> that. And Carlos, how are you doing? We haven't talked in a few days, but how I'm was doing... your weekend? You have a good one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing good, yeah. Um, just really... Uh been eyes open on this selection stuff so oh yeah once uh once today's over yeah i'm gonna have to kind of shift focus here <laughs> alex and I, alex and i were talking about it before the show and uh I, I was telling her i have a degree in political science so i have a tendency to want to go dive into the stats and find out what's going on below the surface and uh right. i i am absolutely convinced that the uh, the TV stations, the networks, the, the magazines, the newspapers have missed the main issue. They're probably going to notice it tonight, but not the main issue, but the main the main thing, the main trend that's going on is that there is a big shift going on, and we're seeing this. We saw it in the early voting. I was looking at the early voting stats. That's how I could I, I could detect it. There's a big shift going on. More older voters are staying home than normal. More younger voters are right. going to the polls. And right. that could have really, really big impact on this year's election. So, um, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, just, I think it's the beginning of that shift. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the few people who's still predicting a big blue wave. And, and I've been seeing that for like the last six months. I don't know where the rest of the media have been. I've been watching their articles and, you know, watching their stuff and so forth. And it's like they and I seem to be looking at different statistics. So I don't quite understand where they're all coming from. Maybe I'm wrong. I could be entirely all wet. You know, that's the nature yeah, of that it, kind of prognostication. It seems too that pe- people have never voted before are definitely Oh, in big numbers. And, are going, and, and, and yeah, I think a lot, uh, a lot more are younger than yeah. there are older, you know, new voters. And so I agree. Yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be very interesting to see. I think, like I said, it's the beginning of a turn because I, I feel that um, we're starting to figure out, hey, um, you know, we are the majority as far as, you know, millennials are concerned and, uh, you know, the the future is ours to, to kind of mold. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think, I think, and also it's a big shift in um, what our, you know, representatives are going to look like too. I think mm-hmm. that uh, for the first time we might have a hundred uh women in Congress, yep. which, which is a huge milestone. Right. Um, mm-hmm. and just just in general, um, you know, more, you know, ethnicities, even even people that, um, you know, veterans, you know, there's a lot of veterans that yep. are also kind of uh, on both sides, which I think is good because then you start to get people that, you know, would talk to each other, <laughs> right? We need <laughs> a little more side. of that. Yeah. So, well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the sentiment or that's the thought, so. We'll see. It's going to be very interesting, I'm sure. I think it will um, be, too. You know, yeah. Results. I, I, I am hopeful for the first time in a few years. I'm hopeful that, um, and this is, of course, a main theme that we harp upon here in uh, LOA Today. I'm hopeful that more and more people are going to be focusing on what they want than what they don't want. Because there's so much, in the last uh, mm. couple of years especially, there's been so much finger pointing and anger and frustration. And, oh, the other side's lying. And the other side's doing this. The other side's doing that. Not so much in terms of what people want, not so much, you know, focusing on what it is that they really want. It's always focusing on what they don't want. And we right. law of attraction folks know that doesn't produce the results you hope that it's going to produce. So I'm hopeful that there's a shift going on. We'll have to see, but that's what I'm hopeful for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Decisions made in fear in general are, are not, and that goes to law of attraction as well. Just not ever a good decision. You know, you Absolutely. definitely want to do something uh, for the affirmative uh, you know, mm-hmm. because of something and not, 
because you're afraid of an outcome or cause, right. You know, uh, yeah, that's that's that'll never uh, steer you in the right direction. But um, exactly. Yeah. So this is going to be a, a an interesting night to. Uh, I really don't usually watch returns. That's not normally my thing to do. But I think I may watch a little bit this this evening. Not not like watching through on a streaming basis. I'll just check in you know, like once an hour and see what's going on. You know, that kind of thing, which I normally yeah. wouldn't do in a midterm. But yeah. <laughs> But, uh, I'm more interested in the questions that that we had to vote on for each state. What did you have in Massachusetts? Like the bills and the measures. Uh, Massachusetts, we had question one was uh, more nursing staff. Question two was what does uh, that mean? More nursing of, staff? That, that that sounds like a strange question for a, a political environment. Well, basically, they're saying that in like emergency rooms and stuff like that, that there's there's the patient to. Oops. Did we miss and lose Alex? Okay, I'm back. Oh, there you are. No, oh, okay. the Wi-Fi went down for a second. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the patient to nursing staff uh, ratio is way off. So that's what that was. What question one was about, and and uh, we're voting yes or no on whether we want more nurses in emergency rooms and in doctors' offices and things of that nature. So is this like a state mandate? In other words, the state's going to say you have yeah. to have a certain number of nurses for certain situations. Is that what it is? Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. I get it. Yeah. So, I think those are interesting, too. I, I think that just the questions to, to your point um, are those, you know, bills and measures, props. I think mm -hmm. you know, they're called some, uh, for certain things. Um that's something I've had an issue with for a long time, and, and if you know, if you have a background in political science, well, you probably know this as well as anybody. But a lot of those things, I, I feel super uncomfortable voting, uh, even the way that I feel is the right way, because there's so many things that are attached to those bills. Mm, um, yeah. So, like, you'll have a nurses' bill that'll have some uh, verbiage in there about um, senators. Uh, uh, contribution uh, limits, and you're like, what is this? Why is this in in here? This has nothing mm -hmm. to do with it. And, and the reason why is because, well, the majority of the bill is this, but in order to kind of get this on the measure, we had to put this other thing on there too that that this you know this side wanted, and and that just co convolutes a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then you start again. You vote for something that that really, in in theory or in thought, is great, um, but you're opening so many back doors. And, you know, that's, that's kind of some of the things that I look at. And that's why I'm interested in, in politics really is just more about, uh, you know, how to reform these things. And that's not in either party, just in general. You know, there's, there's certain things that happen, bills that come to the floor in the Senate that have nobody's read. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's part of yeah, course. Right, and they have to vote them right there. And it's like these bills are, you know, thousands of pages long. And, you know, as an American citizen, it's like if you want me to follow these laws and ordinances and, and things like, why are you making these things so difficult? Like, right? Like, the, the, a lame person should be able to read these things and, and decipher, you know, what they are and what's going right. on. And if not, like, you shouldn't have to have a law degree in order to follow the rules <laughs> of, you know, the the government or the or, or where you live. And that's, you know, that's that's a bigger, you know, hot button issue. But uh, well, what I can tell you is <laughs> welcome to the world of politics because what you're right, describing is right. called pork barreling. Pork barreling is we right. just keep adding stuff onto the bill that has nothing to do with the original bill because, you know, somebody, you, you're going to get their vote if, if you add this on, so you add it on. And now they're also doing right. that with propositions. And like you say, I mean, the average person looks at the proposition. All they see is a single sentence, maybe two, up on their, mm -hmm. their, their board that they're looking at or, or, you know, whatever it is, whatever voting instrument they're using. And they have right. no idea what any of the history is of the thing. And they're supposed to make a, an intelligent decision on it. <laughs> yeah. And then the commercials are both sides, right? It's like, of course. They, right. They both tell, <laughs> they, but they, the, the thing is, they, they both could be telling the truth. You know, here we have uh, one for Prop 8 is for dialysis, something about um, the way that they're changing, um, treating dialysis patient, patients. And so there's one commercial that says, no, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. We're going to die if this happens. And then mm. the other, you know, <laughs> They're saying, oh, well, this is bad for doctors and whatever. But those, both, both of those things could be true because of all of the different kinds of things that are in this bill. So it's like, you know, right. at the end of the day, you really, you really don't know. And I think uh, that's, that's really where I am looking forward to in the next, you know, 10 years or so is see if we can get some more transparency as far mm -hmm. as what's going on. 
Um, there, there, and there's... not just, you know, what we hear in the media, because a lot of that, too, is, is how do we know? We used to argue about, the, about facts. So if you're a Republican, I'm a Democrat, or vice versa, we can, we can agree on the fact of the matter, and we have different opinions on how we're going to go about tackling mm. this. But yeah. in, in this political climate, we can't agree on the facts anymore. And that, mm -hmm. to me, is a, is a huge issue. It's like, well, if we're not comparing apples to apples, then what are we even talking about? Of course, there's a decisive or divis uh, divisive um, kind of political climate because, you know, again, what, what, are, we, what are we even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. always fun. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, there, there, there's a couple thoughts that go to my mind. One is there's a long term, an old, old um, phrase about uh, political legislation and sausages. You don't want to see how either one is made because it's really disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> and it's true. I mean, you just don't want, I mean, it's, it's just revolting what actually happens behind the scenes. And that's been going on for generations. Yeah. There's nothing new in that. What has become the new thing is, particularly over the last 10 to 20 years or so, uh, pl political operatives have really begun to understand that politics, like any other form of communication, whether it be advertising communication or um, entertainment type communication or just even interpersonal communication, all communication is governed primarily by emotions rather than by facts. We like to think in terms mm. of facts. We like to believe that we're factual, but in fact, we're all emotional. And that's yeah. a hard concept. And um, what goes along with that concept is once you understand as a political operative that that's what's, what's winning the day, then you lose an interest in trying to maintain a factual dialogue. That's why we're now in a place where one side or the other is, you know, just making stuff up and just throwing it out there mm -hmm. just to, to energize their base and so forth because they know it has an emotional appeal. And I don't really yeah. see a, a, a nice, easy way back from that one. I'm not quite sure how that's going mm. to resolve itself. I'm not saying it can't resolve itself. I'm just saying I just don't see an easy way back. So right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe what happens today is going to make a positive uh, impact on that. I hope it does, but... I'm just not crossing my fingers on it. <laughs> I'm not saying, yeah, I think it's going to happen. <laughs> but anyway. Right. I mean, I, I, I think that most people, though, are in the middle. Like you talk about, uh, you know, I think that on, on TV it seems like it's very left and right. But I think most people fall, you know, right in that bell curve, right? And so it's like there's a lot of stuff that people do agree on. But um, when you push more and more to the – to the far right or the far left, you start to kind of it starts kind of unravel because you know you're talking you start to argue about stuff that we'll never you know come to terms about you know there's certain things uh, mm -hmm. that's like it's black and white so it's like well why, why are we even talking about those things there's there's plenty of things there here in the middle that we can that we can kind of get through but uh, you know again that's you know everybody. Uh, Acting rationally, so. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're, that's my point, though. You're, ask, you're asking for something that's not likely to happen because everybody's figured out, oh, you get right. more results by pushing the emotions button. Well, so how do you get back to rationality? Right. And I'm not really sure how you do that. Yeah. <laughs> not where there's so much political power at stake. That's the thing. There's a lot of political power at stake. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, one of the things that being a political scientist did for me, that plus uh, for, for many years, I, I don't really consider myself to be politically aligned with anything anymore. I used to be libertarian in my nature, but uh, um, I've since even abandoned that. I, I've gotten to the point where I, I really don't think that politics is ever going to solve anything. We like to think that it will. We hope that no. it will. We, we, we pray <laughs> that it will. We vote like it, we hope that it will. But I don't know. I, I've been alive, alive for 61 years now, and I... After 61 years, I still can't tell you that I've seen any significant change that has come out of politics. I've seen a lot of changes. A lot of changes have happened. But I, if I really honestly look at it, can I say that politics caused them? I'm not so sure I can say mm. that. There are always these other factors, yeah. you know? So A lot of times, they're, I don't politics know. are reactionary, it seems like. Yeah, right? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, you, think, you, you think about, I was watching a documentary the other day about the legal, legalization of uh, of gay marriage here in the U.S., mm -hmm. right? And it was like the thing went to the Supreme Court, and that went to people uh, 
Oh, maybe that's a bad example. That actually is an example of the the court getting it right first. <laughs> the people oh. getting it wrong. <laughs> but, but, well, it depends where you're thinking. I mean, because Doma, when Doma right. was around, they were definitely not getting it right on that one. It took them a while to I overturn think, yeah, that. I, I think it does depend, but I, I also think that um, that's a good, actually a good example of um, that's I think where politics for minorities, especially, is so important. Mm. Um, is protecting our liberties right and i feel mm. like because it's constantly always trying to be taken away and you think about um you know even recently they take they uh or t- i don't know if, if even they did this but they were talking about taking away the protection for voters uh the voter protection act and the uh the argument was well there's no voter suppression anymore oh yeah that's so, going to be yeah, a big because, issue in two yeah. years that's gonna be really big in two years yeah, be- because because there's a law, of course there's not voter suppression. As soon as, you take, as soon as you take the law out, you know, it's it's you know, people are going to take the the liberties where they can. And I think that instead of I really look at it, instead of making huge changes, it's you know protections that that you know we really should seek and look for. Because you think about um, you know even like things like slavery, slavery, and then Jim Crow. The, that's just oppression that looks different, you know, and it just continues mm-hmm. and continues. And now it's uh, the broken, bl- the broken, uh, you know, black and brown family, right? Mm-hmm. That's like the newest thing. And it's you think about it's because of the drug war. And now they're, take, they're talking about, you know, uh, making, you know, the legalization of marijuana a uh, federal thing. And they're also talking about releasing a lot of people. So those are the things that really you think as a minority – especially um, that you got to go out and you got to vote for and you got to really use politics when you can, when it's available to you, you got to use it, you know? Um, yes. As far as like, if you're talking about just an average middle-class America, as far as politics is concerned, no, we, we haven't really received uh, anything, you know, in the last however many years, it's, it's been, you know, <laughs> kind of a ping pong effect of, um, giving you know subsidies and and programs for those that are less fortunate and also then giving tax cuts so so people in the you know a lot of people in the middle have been stuck without really much to show for for, for a while you're, yeah, you're making yeah. a, a a strong argument for centrism so congratulations on that <laughs> <laughs> i really do think though that the whole thing really points to how important it is to focus on what you want because with even you can tell even in our conversation here we're talking about sometimes stuff that we don't like and that's where most political conversations go. They end up going to, that's how you end up with that extreme left, extreme right thing that you were talking about. They end up to focusing mm-hmm. on a whole bunch of stuff that one side or the other just doesn't like. And they get all worked up about it. They get angry about it. I mean, there's a lot of anger in this election on both sides. You can, you can see it in the media. You can see it in social media. It's all over the place. And that anger is what's driving a lot of it. Well, that means that, there, that there's a whole lot of people who are focusing on what they don't want. Yeah, true. that's true. You know, so at think, some point you got to shift. You got to say, wait a minute, I'm not going to keep focusing on that because all that do is all it does is give me more stuff I don't want. I got to I got to shift it up. Mm-hmm. I got to change it. Yeah. You also have to ask for stuff for your vote. I think Killer Mike, uh, who's a, a rapper and activist out of Georgia, he really makes a great point. He says that, again, for, for black and brown people, we've been voting Democrat for as long as we can remember. But we don't, you know, that's an expected outcome. And we, we never ask for anything for our vote. We just show up. We're like, oh, we're just going to show up. And he was like, oh, well, the Republicans haven't done anything for us. Well, you've been voting Democrat for 50 years. And really, what have you gotten from them, you know, also? So it's, it's kind of that. It's like not that we're not going to vote or that we're not going to take this right. But it's like, hey, let's agree as a group of things that, like you said, things we want. And then, you know, use our vote to enact those things. I think a lot of um, votes are take, taken for granted. And mm-hmm. um, that's being, I think, shown a lot too now, especially for, um, like you said, people being energized with emotions and how are women going to vote? How are minorities going to vote? How are these people, young people versus old people? Um, I think that's what you're, you're looking. It's like, hey, you're seeing is more people saying, hey, you know, um, this is what I want. This is what I expect for those votes. And I think that that you're seeing in, in the change of garb in, in the in the seats more than anything. And those new people that have never been politicians before. There's a guy I, out of I, Georgia. I hope, out of, uh, I hope you're right. I hope that it actually is focusing on people 
focusing on what they want. I, I guess I'm a little jaded. I've, I've seen so much of the other direction, so I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think yeah. in terms of when, when I'm thinking about focusing on what I want rather than what I don't want, I'm actually thinking outside of political circles. I think mm, that, okay. you know, like, for instance, you, you were talking about um, ethnic issues, right? So for me, right. if, if I want to think about it from, from uh, I, now, my ethnicity is not really, usually not an issue. It's, you know, white male is not usually a, a problem, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but for somebody who has, a, has an ethnic background, um, for me, I, I wouldn't be trying to organize my ethnicity in a certain direction because, first of all, everybody's a little bit different anyway, so it's not like you, there's, it's not like there's, there's one Latino. That's just not the way it is. You know, there's, there's not one right. black yeah. person. It's just, there's, there are individuals. They're all individuals. So I'd be focusing on what's important to me, whether it be important to me as a Latino or as a black person or whatever, or just me as a person. And then I would be mm -hmm. putting out there, here's the kind of thing I'm interested in. I want to find other people who have the same kind of interest and mm -hmm. basically taking advantage of the law of attraction to bring those people together. So that, you know, basically you're expanding your social circle and your right. social mm -hmm. circle is becoming some, perhaps something of an activist circle, depending on what you're trying to do. And then using that, the, the, the law of attraction dynamic to move outside of political circles and say, you know what, I, I'm not going to trust that government's going to bring me what I want. So I'm going to focus on what I want and let the law of attraction bring it to me. And I'm going to uh, encourage other people I know who are in the, the same mindset as I am to focus the same way. Because if you do that, you don't have to worry about how it's going to happen anymore, right? That That's the whole point right. of law of attraction. You don't have to worry about how it happens. So you don't have to worry whether or not it's the government that's going to do it. I mean, you don't care how the universe de delivers the result, right? You just yeah, want the right. result. <laughs> it doesn't matter how it got there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. So, I mean, that's, that's where my yeah. hope is. My hope is, and that's one of the reasons we do the show, is that more and more people will understand when you focus on what you want, you don't have to worry about whether it happens through government or whether it happens through religion or whether it happens through the entertainment industry or, you know, the news, you know, reporting the news differently or, or whatever. You, you, you're counting on the basic laws of the universe to deliver what it is that you right. want. And that's always going to be a much better play, I think. Yeah. I agree. Alex, I can always count on you for a nice, concise answer. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, anyway, we've been spending more than enough time on uh, the political picture. Let's yeah, get to yeah. our, let's get to our topic because we were talking last week about careers and about how um, important it is to focus on what you want, where career is concerned, and and some of the challenges, uh, particularly that young people have, with trying to identify careers. And Carlos, you told a really great story about how your life has progressed so far, and uh, you know. The, the the curves that have come along the way and how you went with the curves and you didn't really fight things and you ended up with results that were astonishing to you. And uh, we heard some from Alex too. I guess the, the, the question is, where do we want to go next with that conversation? Because it's a big issue. I mean, a lot of people are still struggling with career type issues. Where, where do you want to take it today? Now, I actually thought of something when you, when you were speaking just now, um, and it has to do with uh, university and a lot of people are, or not, maybe not even university, but uh, trade schools, anything that really, you know, cosmetology, anything that really you have to go and train for or you go to school for, for a career. And I think that um, something that I just wish I would have known, like, and you think about these things in reflection, you know, talking to your younger self, things that you would, the knowledge you want. And once I have it, I love to share it, right? And so mm -hmm. I feel like, one big thing was that I that I found a lot of people or I saw a lot of people doing was they were majoring in things that uh, they they love, but they weren't getting uh, any outcome out of it. And I think that you mm -hmm. have to kind of be skeptical of um, the university system and those kind of things just because they offer something as a major doesn't mean that you need you need to spend 40,000 a year in order to do that thing that you love. Like if, if you were spending 50,000 a year to get a, a, a dance degree and you, because you love dance, but you, you really don't want to be a professional dancer or 
I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that are like that. So I think that it's more important. I, I've kind of found, and I've, I've um, kind of said this and, and as advice before, it's like really um, find what you love, but then school should be about arming yourself with tools in order to achieve that. So it may not be that you need to go to school for dance. Like maybe you love dance and you want to be in that industry, right? And mm-hmm. so... Right. You may, yeah. So you may want to, uh, what is it that you want to do, you know, for dance? Maybe you want to be a, a choreographer. Well, maybe you take choreography. There's, there's this, there's this different ways of going about it. And I think that we're kind of brainwashed into thinking like, you go to high school and then you go to college and get this specific major, and then this is going to be your outcome. And it's very linear, and that's not how life works. And right. I feel like there's a lot of. Um, you know, it hits you in the face once you're like, hey, I spent, now I have uh, $100,000 in debt mm. and mm-hmm. my de- my degree is worthless. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and again, it's there's nothing wrong with loving art. There's nothing wrong with loving dance. But do you have to go to, especially if you're not going to a great dance school, like if, if you're going to Cal State San Bernardino for dance, like, could you love dance and 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 not have to spend that? For, for, for $20,000 a year, you know what kind of dance, one-on-one dance training you could have? You know, you see what I'm saying? Like, so don't don't just you know look at something and say I don't know what I want to do, so I'm going to start spending spending this money yes. that I don't have already. You know what I mean? Like, I agree with that. Take your time. Go to the junior mm-hmm. college. Find out what you like. Find out what you know. Try jobs. Try different industries that you might like. Um, don't be in a rush. Some people know right away. Like my sister knew she wanted to be a doctor and she didn't pick her head up until she was one. Right. And that's, you know, all, and all, you know, favor to those people. But again, a lot of people, especially in the, the fringe or the, the, the not normal or the not uh, very common um, professions, um, I think that there's more to be said with networking and do, getting experience and doing those things rather than, necessarily getting the degree again not saying mm-hmm. that that won't serve you if you go to juilliard obviously you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna uh you know benefit from that um but that's something that i've seen that it that, and that's and i wanted to bring it up first because that's the beginning of a journey a lot a lot of times into this career thing and, and you don't want to you don't want to set yourself up for failure um you know out, the, out of the go i want to also yeah, point i feel out, like um oh, go ahead alex go ahead go ahead no, no, you oh, I was going to say, you, I feel you, like you've I You've only done short I statements know. so far. we got to let you talk a little bit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, a lot of the people I know that went to school and, and spent all that money don't even use their degrees that, that they went to school for. Like, they're totally doing something completely different, as opposed to the kids that went to trade school and studied for a specific career that they're still to this day doing that job. So I totally feel what Carlos is saying. Mm-hmm. I, I would want to point out that if you already have one of those degrees and you feel like, well, I didn't really know what I was going for and I don't know why I got it. I would recommend not feeling bad about that because even mm-hmm. with what you got, I mean, I, I have a degree in political science. Do you know, do you have any idea why I got a degree in political <laughs> science? I don't have an idea why I got a degree in political science. Right. That's my point. I mean, <laughs> exactly. when, when I first went after it, I thought I was going to be a lawyer. I took one pre-law course. I said, well, nope, this ain't for me. And I was done with that track. And now all of a sudden I'm on this, this, this degree track for something that I didn't even know what I was going to do with it. And to this day, I don't know what mm-hmm. I'm going to do with it from a career point of view. I never have done anything with it, but just because I'm not doing anything with it, uh, directly other than trying to figure out what's happening with the next election um, doesn't mean that it wasn't worthwhile for me because I did learn a lot from it. I mean, I learned a lot about myself. Right. I learned a lot about how the world works just by uh, taking that class and taking that, that series of classes mm-hmm. and, and getting that degree. So anything that you do, any kind of study that you do is worthwhile. I do agree with you that it's important to spend as much time as we can focusing on trying things, you know, try this, try that, try that. I like your idea, Carlos, of the, the ju- junior college approach. You know, just try something out see if you like it before you commit to anything, before you start saying, I'm going to spend $20,000 on it. I mean, when I, when I went to school, believe it or not, my entire debt when I um, left school was under $10,000. And believe it or not, wow. that was a lot. <laughs> Because the pre- right. previous then, generation, they had spent like $500 a year on college. 
So, I mean, that shows just what kind of a geometric scale there's been in terms of college costs over the years. And, but, the, mm-hmm. and the information isn't any as val- and it isn't any more valuable now than well, I think trigonometry still. <laughs> well, I think it's probably <laughs> more of it. Thousand dollars worth of trigonometry now. Like, 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 yo, I got I got short change. I need I need that trigonometry that you guys you know. I only got the five hundred dollar uh, package. Uh, no, but that's, that's my point is to, <laughs> is to be skeptical, right? You should be skeptical of everything, but just. Think about why you're doing things. I, I'm very uh, against doing things because others are doing them. As soon as I feel like a lot of people mm. are doing that, I'm like, whoa, what's going? Why? What, what's going on here? Shows like I haven't watched Game of Thrones yet. <laughs> you know, because Same. I'm like, well, everybody, <laughs> everybody likes that. I, I just it, it gives me a, a, a natural uneasiness, right? And and when I say that, because you don't want to get say, involved in that mob mentality, right? Just because mm-hmm. it's like, oh, why are you going to college? Well, everybody's going to college. I'm supposed to, you know. It's like. Again, yeah, not no. that college that's is bad, why I didn't like, do it. <laughs> don't, don't waste, yeah, don't waste, uh, you know, time and money and just look at the cost benefit, right? It's like, hey, mm-hmm. is is this college? Oh yeah, I got a scholarship. Oh great, cool. Of course, you know, I can now. Now you do whatever, you know. It doesn't matter if you wasted the money, really, because again, if you want to, if you want to spend it on whatever, because you didn't cost you anything, right? But if it mm-hmm. is, if it costs oh, you but, forty, but, but of course, it does cost now, you your time and your effort. Because if you're going for a four-year right. degree, you are you're giving up four years of your life for it. So I think it That's still true. makes sense to That's pursue true. what you love, or at least to try to find what you love before you pursue it. I mean, it would be hard to get rid of a, a of a free four-year scholarship. I mean, to walk away from that, I agree, that would be tough to do. But it might be smart <laughs> to take a little time just to see what is it I want to do before I even consider taking it on. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then, you know, also don't let shame or embarrassment kind of determine your path either. Because I think a big part of um, me and and finding what I love now is finding a lot of stuff that I was was okay. I didn't really love, you know. So it's like you know, from the time I was 16 to the time I had graduated college, I probably had 12 jobs, right? Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, which is less than 10 years. So you can kind of do the math on that. Uh, but I tried everything. So I was I spun signs in front of uh, you know. Uh, apartment complexes. I worked at McDonald's. I was a. I, I worked at a college bookstore. I was a manager of a hair salon. I. Uh, I worked at a PR firm. I worked, you know, as as a performer at Disneyland. And it's the thing is, the reason I did all these things is because I'm a. I said I love saying yes to opportunities, you know, especially new things. It's like, oh, have, you want to do? You want to uh, be a performer at Disneyland? Well, I've never performed anything before. But yes, absolutely, I do want. To, I want to do that, <laughs> you know. And it's and sometimes, yeah, like I said, you figure out that you don't like it, but don't let fear or embarrassment. Oh well, what are people going to think if I try to do that? You know what I mean? Like, no, I feel like you a lot can't of times, live like that. Yeah, a lot of times we we let uh, kind of these pressures kind of guide us. Oh God, yes. Um, but yeah, but the opportunities again, speaking of the law of attraction, they come to you for a reason, right? So mm. just. Just be open, yeah. Be as open as possible. I know sometimes it's harder for us than other times, but that's a great um, attitude. The huh? more, yeah, the more stuff you try, especially like I love trying things for the for the first time. There's just something about that excitement of not knowing, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, so yeah. That's 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 kind of my advice: is try as much stuff as you possibly can. I gotta ask you about the sign spinning because I, you know, I, I've seen everybody's seen the the people spinning <laughs> the signs on the corners and so forth. Uh-huh. Is there like a competition yeah, no. that goes on? Because it seems like you go from one quarter to the next and you got different guys spinning signs there. And it's like they're, they're almost like in, in, in an acrobatic core. They're trying to do it better than the other guy. Is that is that like true? Is there like a competitive edge so that's, to that? That's just, yeah, that's just, a, that's just people being prideful in their work. So oh, okay. when you, you see somebody like that, you give them a honk. And, you know, these guys make $10 an hour minimum wage. Right. Um, so there's two there's two kind of philosophies in science spinning. So there's that one, right? It says, "Well, I'm going to be the Kobe Bryant of the science spinning community," <laughs> right? And they're going all out, they're doing tricks, right? There's, maybe, they probably have like a couple of wristbands on, you know, the sweat. <laughs> they're, they're stretching before, like this is, this is their Super Bowl, right? And then there was I was part of the other faction where. Um, I'm a big believer in the American dream, and when I say that, I mean do the least amount of work for the most amount of money. And so, ah. when yeah, so when I was sign spinning, I was doing a lot of just pointing, right? It's just, this is where <laughs> it is. I'm not trying to confuse you, you anybody. Were, you were promoting, here. yeah. 
Right. I was, <laughs> I was being as efficient in my movements as possible, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm just I did having realize, the visuals over here. <laughs> right. I did realize, like, hey, if I, if I spend this sign 20 times, um, I'll make $10. But if I spend, spend this sign 50 times, I'll also only have $10. So that's when I was like, you know, I think that for me, this is, this is where I'm, this is as much effort as I'm going to put into this. You, you remind yeah. me of the guy I saw one time doing some sign spinning and he was very low key about it. He had a sign. He wasn't even waving it around very much. He was waving it a little bit. And he was going. Right. <laughs> very, very subtle motions. Over there, over there. Yeah. Like, dude, you have a six foot sign hanging off your neck. Like, use the sign. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. I wonder how well those things work too. That was the other thing I always wondered. Do people actually pay attention to them? Does that actually? Do you ever see people, you know, going over to the parking lot where your store is because you you were spinning the sign for that store? Well, the thing is, it's you're not. It was for um, real estate, so it was like for oh. opening developments and those kind of things. So I I didn't see anybody that actually would use it because I'd be on some dirt road where there's no houses yet and mm. there's like four model homes that are up. Right. So that's why it was, you know, like I said, it was, I'm not going to science, you know, spin science for no one. So I can see about a half a mile up the road. So I was like, oh, here's, here's somebody comes and then, you know, I'll put in a lot of effort for that car. You know, <laughs> oh. But it's like, well, they're gone now. So, uh, you know, wait here for the next car. <laughs> I love it. I had never thought I was going to get insight into sign spinning. That's great. <laughs> yeah. no, it's oh funny. A, lot of, a lot of people actually give the opposite advice. They're like, hey. Don't do a lot of jobs because then that's going to look like um, like you're you're not stable. Like you want to you constantly oh, want to yeah. leave. That, that's say, that's the old style. That's the old I'm school like, mentality. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I do want to leave. What do you mean? I, 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 I've never taken a, the job. The, the job that I've gotten has always been better than the last one, right? And it's like, right. as long as that's the case, then you know I'm just going to stay here for whose benefit? Because they'll replace me faster. You know, if I if if I were to keel over tomorrow, they'll they'll put up a uh, uh, you know job wanted sign tomorrow. So it's like you know, yeah, have loyalty, but at the same time, it's like look for your own growth. Uh, and then right. all through through all those experiences, you know, the PR firm was completely different from the from the hair salon. But I learned things at the hair salon that are invaluable, and I always I take them to this day. It's like, mm-hmm. well, how, how, what do you mean? Well, I worked in a salon with twenty women, and it's like, well. Yeah, that's a lot of personalities, and people are upset, and and then scheduling, and customers, and all this mm-hmm. stuff. It's like, well, now I took that, and and when I'm project managing, it's like I have just as much pressure, but I don't know how to handle it. And so that's my point about um, just being open to these opportunities because um, don't get set on your mind like, oh well. So for me, I, right now, I want to be a comedian and actor. Okay, well if I if I set that in my mind, you know. 15 years ago as my, as my outcome, that's great, right? I, I have a, a, a true north. But then as opportunities come, like I said, they're there for a reason. So for me, if, for me to be like, no, no, that's not exactly what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, that's maybe a little bit too hyper focused because again, you pick up these tools and these, but you're, you're, you're building a tool belt so that when you get what you're asking for, that you're ready for it, you know, and you can sustain it, you can hold on to it. You know, that's, I think that's the biggest thing. And so, um, yeah, just be cognizant. Even if you're taking opportunities in the meantime, you're still going to school. There's a lot of people doing jobs while you're going to school. Don't take the jobs for granted. That Definitely learn, try to learn uh, as much as you can, you know, how to deal with people, how to deal with bosses. You know, it's like I, I had, I was told, uh, or I experienced this. I was like, man, after having so many jobs, I'm like, I would say like not, eight out of ten of my bosses were not good, not not good managers, not good bosses. So I'm like, that's the majority. So mm-hmm. I'm like, well, if that's the case, then it's kind of good that I went through that, right? So now I'm, <laughs> now I'm uh, you know, able to deal with these different difficult situations and so on. So yeah, that's, I mean, hitting the the same uh, or beating the, the dead horse, I guess as you say, but. <laughs> Well, no, I, I love the point that you made too about um, not uh, worrying about whether or not your your resume is showing a lot of job skipping because that's actually a relic from my father's generation. My father worked for the General Electric Corporation for forty four straight years. That was his entire work life at one company. 
Right. Mm. And, and that was the mindset during that era. You didn't want to be shifting jobs all the time. You wanted to ve- develop that uh, relationship of loyalty. But that fell apart during my generation, actually. The, the whole thing about loyalty to the worker fell apart. And so it really doesn't yeah. pay to, to try to stick with just one job on your resume or two jobs in your resume. It, it actually does pay to, to move around. That's the new, that's the way things now work. Yeah. Yeah, because now yeah. you're experienced in all these different areas. And you know what, to, what you can handle and what different situations based on where you've been. Yep, exactly right. So, okay, well, now we've all agreed that it's good to uh, try things out. So you're trying things out. Now, Carlos, you kind of touched on this a little bit, but you're trying things out. How do you know when you found the right one? That's a good point. I think that, first of all, this notion of the perfect one as far as relationships or the perfect one as far as the job, like I feel like we have to kind of let that go because for me it's like uh, happiness is reality minus equals reality minus expectations, right? And so I feel like some, a lot of times we pigeonhole ourselves into these expectations for work, for love, for, well, this has, this person has to be exactly my Prince Charming and he has to, you know, check all these boxes or this job has to, the thing is like, we're, we're in this new world of choices and the internet. And there's just so many things that we're never going to be happy if we don't look and, and, and live in gratitude, be happy where we're at or what we have. And so, the right one, I feel like, again, like maybe changing that whole mentality and it's like, well, how do I make what I, how do, how do I find happiness in what I'm doing right now? You know, because life is linear also, I mean, life is fluid, right? So nothing is forever. Even when you get to, I think if you're working towards whatever it is that you're working towards, let's say, um, for me, uh, I'm a touring stand-up comedian. Okay, cool. That's, again, I'm a human, I want to grow, you know, so that's not going to be the Mm -hmm. end for me. So, you know, I thought maybe 10 years ago, that's the one, the job. But once I get to the one, there's going to be other ones, right? So um, don't kind of, you know, attach your happiness to an outcome of the perfect job or the perfect, just be happy. And if you're not happy, go find happiness. You know, I I think it's, 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 we complicate it, but that's, they're very, you know, I, I had a, I didn't tell this the last time, but during what was going on, kind of I lost my, uh, me and my girlfriend at the time had broken up. I had lost uh, the job or I had quit the job that I was at. And um, really I, had, I made a promise to myself um, that I wouldn't do anything that didn't make me enti- entirely happy, completely happy. Mm. And Good I made you. that promise to myself. And again, I break that promise you know, sometimes even now, but that's a, a cognizant thing that I started thinking about then. And for me, again, if we talk about life as a feeling process and the things that you manifest is, is about feeling, then I think that you're, you taking your own happiness as the main priority is the number one, right? And so once I started doing that, it's like, well, that's, that's what happened with the job. I was like, I made that decision and I was going to, to work every day, hating it, dreading it. If I say, well, this doesn't match my new um, commitment to myself, so I'm going to let it go. And Mm -hmm. again, not advisable to just kind of leave a job without anything, but it it was uh, something that I had really, like, I had made that commitment and there wasn't anything that was going to stop me from, you know, from keeping it. And so that's what started, you know, the working out more, the eating healthy, all these things that were making me extremely happy were the only things that I would do. And, And that includes people, too in my life that, you know, unfortunately, uh, we just, I just had to fizzle out from talking to or because again, I would only accept positivity and things that are going to make me happy into my life. And so once I, again, once I made that commitment, the, the, the universe started to unfold and unravel, you know, for me. So I think that again, going back to the feeling process, uh, that that's kind of important. Let me, let me come at it from a different angle, because I think I may have uh, sure. put, a, uh, put the wrong question into your head. Let's put it this way. If you find something that you love, that you're really enjoying mm-hmm. doing, should you keep doing it? And if so, how long should you keep oh. doing it? Yeah. No, I, you just do it until it doesn't make you happy anymore. Do it until you start cheating the process, I think. That's what I've, mm-hmm. I've talked to a lot of people, or I've heard a lot of uh, things. There was a, a, 
an HBO series with LeBron James, and they're talking to other, you know, top athletes, top comedians, just the kind of the people that are top in the field. Talking about the shop. And, yeah, the shop. It's called the shop, and it was is yeah. great. And that's something that they said. They said, um, uh, what was the was it? Who did the Daily Show before? It was John Stewart. And they asked, well, wh- wh- what did you get? You were in the height of whatever it is that that's what you've always wanted, and you were in the height of it. You know, why did you leave? And he said, I left when I started cheating the process. Like, I, I, I didn't love, I, I wasn't putting the care and love into it that I had before. And I think that's the time where it's time to say goodbye, right? You, mm-hmm. you really put the passion and the love into it because what you put in, you will get out. And I think that um, there's, yeah, a lot of diminishing returns. It's a point to where it's like, yeah, it's time for me to grow out of this. Um, I'm comfortable I'm just kind of going through the motions here. I think that's really time to to seek, you know, something else. Because again, if you're not putting the passion into it, do you really do you love it that much still? Does that make sense? Mm. Mm-hmm. That's and that, again, this is this is all my personal opinion, but oh, that's, that's fine. That's <laughs> like, yeah, that's that's where I feel like I would draw the line, you know, to to move on to something else. Is that the way you see it, Alex? That's exactly the way I see it. I feel like if you you do things as long as you're happy in it, and when it's no longer satisfying you, that's when it's time to bow up. I agree. What about uh, if you're doing something that you love, but the money isn't where you want it to be? What about then? Find a way to make it work for you. Because obviously the way you're doing it is not is not working. If it's not, if it's not the amount of money that you want to make. So for instance, like me doing hair, I love making people feel beautiful, but working at a certain salon was not working for me. I wasn't getting the clients that I needed. So I had to go out on my own. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd say patience too. Like, cause that's, that, that's the flip side to the coin, right? It's like, well, now you're doing it what you love, but you're not making the money. Mm. And. This, and I don't know if I said this in the last one, but, and I, but I say this a lot, so uh, <laughs> forgive me if I'm... But, <laughs> hey, Carlos, I repeat myself every week, so you join the club. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think that when you love to do something... Um, oh, let me back up. So I think that, again, the people that come, become very successful is the people that stick around. And it's through, like, the first phase of people will drop off because they're doing it for the wrong reasons, right? Oh, I mm-hmm. want to do music. Well, why? Because I want to be famous. I want to make a lot of money. Okay. That only lasts for, that, that kind of passion only lasts for a couple of years, maybe that. Mm-hmm. Right? And you have the people, the next, uh, who really do love it, but then they don't have the passion. Or they may not love it enough to go through all of the tribulations that are required. Or, again, there's, there's situations that happen in our life. That wasn't for them, right? They Something you know, drastically changed in their life. They had a child or whatever. And it's like, now I have to be responsible for my family, and this is not realistic for me anymore, right? But mm. the people that get all the way through, you know, and I see this a lot in, in a lot of different professions, music, Comedy, acting, uh, especially the, the ones that aren't just like go to school and get your degree and, and then get a, get a job. Um, right around, yeah, that 10 year mark, it's like you see, start to see people emerge and it's, and the money shows up. And again, 10 years is a long time to wait, but if you're doing it because for the money, then you're already in for the wrong reasons. And so like, it's kind of this, this tightrope walk and, and how do I stay on this? thing without falling off and sometimes and it's not going to be a constant 10 years too you, you might be like hey i'm struggling right now i got to take a year and i got to do this other thing or i'm not writing a lot right now because you know certain things are happening in my life but you know again if you just keep pushing to me it's an eventuality to me it's an, an eventuality eventuality um you know i like to look at like danny devito i always talk about he's a actor mm-hmm. you know short Pudgy guy, four eleven, yep. bald, <laughs> overweight, and I'm like, man, he doesn't fit a single I, I, stereotype I, of any kind of actor no. that I've ever heard of. <laughs> I, I know, and I, and I read a story about him that basically he just got told no so many times, and, mm. but it was just non deterring, right? And that's, I think that's where the passion meets, you know, what you love is when 
it's almost an irrational thing. It's like, this doesn't make any logical sense that anybody would put you in a movie. Oh, well, I don't care about that. This is really what I want to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, going, and that has to do with the law of attraction, too. It's like th- those people don't see regular obstacles mm-hmm. and see them as obstacles. It's like, oh, well, you know what? That's just happening right now. No, no big deal. Mm-hmm. Or whatever it is, just to kind of get their minds wrapped around their eventuality. And so, um, yeah, that, I mean, I have, and again, I have, you know, great respect for people I see that have done that and just fought all the way through. And, and what I've learned from those people also is that, is just, that it's worth it. It's like, man, I just went through so much. <laughs> but be, when you're doing something that you love, then all the years, all those 10 years have been worth it. You know, it's like mm-hmm. those, yeah. even, even in the struggles, like they, they've had, great times and they don't they don't take those things those years for granted you know when you do it for the wrong reasons it's like man it took me 10 years and now i finally made it it's like they look at those 10 years differently they're like oh man it's those 10 years suck <laughs> i would never do that again and you know people that you know did it for the right reasons they look back and they're like wow look at all these things that i built um and now they're coming into fruition and it's almost like seeing a child or seeing like you know, something that you created, like be what it is. I think there's something beautiful in that. I, I yeah, agree it's you. like you gotta gather up all the berries because you don't know how sweet your pie is gonna be at the end. So gather every one. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, no, it's true. And in fact, uh, when we when we do it that way, I mean, it, it's possible to be on a track where you're being patient about a, a career choice. That when you finally get close to the goal, you find really not what you wanted to do in the first place. You thought it was, mm. but it really isn't. Oh, right. And in fact, I interviewed, speaking of comedy, I interviewed one of my first interviews many years ago was a comedian who was a contemporary of like Drew Carey and Ellen DeGeneres and you know that, that group. And it just, they were all just starting to get their shows. He was about to get his show and he pulled out. And then his friends asked him, including those people, asked him, why are you, why are you dropping out? You're about ready to get your big break. And he said, I just don't want to do this. And today he is a corporate speaker. He uses his comedy. He goes around and gives all these talks and you know, he'll give them like a 10 minute comedy thing to get them all laughing and, and in a good mood. And then he'll give his talk about, I think he's basically talking about, uh, what kind of law of attraction, positive thinking and, and, uh, you know, getting yourself into the good feeling place and having stuff come out of it that's good. So he, he's basically doing that kind of stuff, but he gave up what could have been a very lucrative career. Why? Cause it wasn't right for him. That's the right. thing. When, yeah. when you're moving along, you, you, you don't really worry about whether you're getting to the end, I think, because it's not about the end. It's about the journey. And when you're in that journey, mm-hmm. you, may, you may decide to change paths, and that's perfectly okay. Yeah. The main thing is stay in the journey and enjoy the journey. Right. I think that, that goes to my, my first point about college and all that stuff, too, is that a lot of times that what you envision in your mind as something that you want, um, you don't have – good information, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I want to be an actor. I want to be famous. And then you get famous and you're like, wait, I don't want this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like, we, 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 only, we only see, we have like selective, um, we, we, I don't even, it's selective seeing or selective, you know, it's like we only see like the, the, the good parts of all these things, right? And that's something that when I, you know, dove into comedy full time, that's what hit me in the face huge was, I only see specials and people laughing and everybody having a great time. Yeah, but you don't see the paying the dues part. Right. Yeah, you don't see you don't see going to a show and then showing up and there's three people there and mm-hmm. you go an hour. You don't see, you know what I'm saying? So it's like those are the things that, um, again, when reality hits the fan, then you're like, it's good to reevaluate and then pivot. But that's my point about not having too hard of an end because – I think when you do have that end, then all the stuff leading up to it, you you, you almost feel too pot committed. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like I spent three years making this mistake to be this comedian. To you know, to your point of that guy. Oh, I wanted my show, and I spent all these years getting it. And so if you think that that's the end, or if that's the like, then now it's like, well, I don't want to give it up because I already spent so much time making this. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm just gonna that's do not it a good anyways. mentality to have. But a lot of people do that, and that's that's yeah. again, that's uh, just trying to trying to catch these pitfalls, you know, and make people aware because the, 
those are those are the things that will distract you from your from your destiny, right? It's like, oh man, mm-hmm. I should have pivoted, but <laughs> I was just too focused. And then no, because eventually you're gonna figure it out, and it's gonna be however many years down the line, mm-hmm. and it's just gonna be like you said, a waste of time that you could have had back, you know. Your little analogy yeah. there reminded me of something that Mark Evans, who does the uh, Sunday after, Sunday evening show with Anne Marie McEwen and I, um, he's also a comedian like you guys, and he tells me a story. I think he told it this past Sunday about uh, there was a concert that was given many many years ago in a relatively large uh, venue in in Georgia, and it was with two. Uh, Two musicians who, up until that point, they, they hadn't their careers hadn't really taken off, um, but the two musicians were Billy Joel and Jimmy Buffett, and there were nine <laughs> wow. people. There were nine people in the audience. Can you imagine a head a double headliner with Billy Joel and Jimmy Buffett <laughs> on the same program, and there's just nine people in the audience? Um, talk about paying your dues, yeah. right? And, and, of course, his joke was, now, of course, there are 50,000 people who claim they were one of those nine people in the audience. But the point is, <laughs> mm-hmm. they still had to go through that, right? They had to go through that kind right. of, of thing. Yep. Everybody does. It's just part of, of, of the journey. And that's why I'm saying you got to love the journey. If, you're, if you can find a way to love that, that scene of being in that place where there's only nine people in the audience, but by God, you're going to have fun with those nine people, now you got a chance mm-hmm. to have a career out of it. But if you're going to go into it with the right. idea of, oh, God, only nine people. I'm just going to be twisting in the wind here. Well, you might as well just hang it up. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah, exactly I'm saying right. that, that, that was my point. Is that, that would make a lot of people quit. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That would make a lot of people quit. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's just kind of pay your dues. And uh, and it's 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 building. Just looking at look at it as building. You know what I mean? Like if you're mm-hmm. building your house, you'd be excited for every room that you you put up. Oh man! Oh wow! Look, you see the bathroom, and we did a. You know what I mean? You wouldn't be focused on that the house isn't finished. You know the whole right. time. You'd, you'd be excited every time you, something happens. It's like that's that's kind of what you got to look at the process like. Is like you know count and 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 celebrate the small wins. You know, like I think that's huge too. Is and I I try to do that. Is like celebrate. Uh, hey, I got an agent. Okay, we're gonna, you know, that's that's good. You know, give yourself a pat on the back and see how far you've come. Um, do that with care, right? But you don't want to get too. Uh, that's the the flip side of the coin is you know being too too happy with yourself and you really haven't done anything yet. <laughs> that can also happen. Depends but, what your goal is, I guess. But yeah, hey, we, we only have about a minute and a half left. I want to make sure I get a couple of um, of uh, announcements in. First of all, if you're not yet a subscriber to this podcast, you can see what kind of conversation we have. We have good conversation with great people with really interesting viewpoints. And it's so simple to become a subscriber. Most people know how to, to find podcast software if they're already podcast listeners and find shows and so forth. But if you don't know how, we've got a nice little thing set up on our homepage at LOAToday.net. You just go there and there's icons to click and it just walks you through the process. Um, and when you do, of course, all the episodes, all 11 plus uh, being made every week, come streaming right to your smartphone. And for all of our subscribers, please do continue to put out on social media that you're listening and watching LOA today. Maybe you're watching in the uh, Facebook Law of Attraction Changed My Life group today, um, where we've been uh, live streaming to all of our episodes now for the last uh, week, 10 days, and we're going to continue to do so. Um, or if you're just one of our regular subscribers, which is, is great too, please just put it out in social media because... Through the law of attraction and through the laws of how social media work, more and more people will find <laughs> out about your daily dose of happy. And, and I, I'll tell you, you talk about dreams, Carlos. You talk about dreams. My dream is 10,000 listeners for every episode. And I, I just think about that. I, I play that out in my head and I imagine it. Even though I'm not earning the, the lending off of it right now, but I keep thinking about that. Not so much because I'll make a living doing that, because I will get to that point. I'll be making a good living. But I just think about what happens to society as a whole. How, what happens when you hit, when mm-hmm. you just you know, yeah. throw out 10,000 people out there every single day having a great day because they got their day off to a good start by listening to the, to the program? I, I, it just right. boggles in my mind to think all the different ways that plays out. The ripple effect is just fabulous. So that that's, yeah. that's, that's an example of how I get jazzed doing something that I'm not getting paid to do. You guys are getting paid to do this. But I just get jazzed by it. I just I think it's just so cool to, to keep trying to do this and maybe turn it into a career someday. And when that day comes, I'm going to be like, yeah, this is fabulous. I can hardly wait. (laughs) (laughs) So So on that note, I'll I'll, I'll go ahead. No, finish up. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, like I said last time, if you really feel like you're getting something out of it, make sure you tell your best friend. Yes. Everybody got that one person that you share everything with. If you really like it, tell your best friend to subscribe or listen. 
And then also, to your point, uh, Walt, you know, that grumpy guy at work, you know, maybe you should listen to this LOA today. Because <laughs> if you listen to it, then I'm going to have a better day at work every day. So interesting you know, approach. That, that one do with caution, but, uh, yeah, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's a fix for you. Very cool. I like that. All right. Well, guys, this has been good and, uh, I'm glad we did this. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing next week, but we'll figure that out. And, uh, as soon as you, I, I I'm going to let you guys figure out what the topic is for next week. So you let me know and then I'll advertise it. Okay. 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 That sound good. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll leave it at that and we'll see you all next time here on LOA today. Goodbye, everybody.